on this edition of Titans All Access. We recap another Tennessee Titans victory at Nissan Stadium. General Manager John Robinson is here to hit the high points of the win over the Bucks and to preview this weekend's trip to Carolina. How did Derrick Henry do it on the ground against Tampa Bay? Dave McGinnis shows us in Beneath the Surface. The Titans' Chattanooga circle of defensive tackles remains unbroken. Tony Brown returns to Nashville to heap praise on his scenic city protege, Isaiah Mack. And Pro Bowl tight end Delaney Walker sits down with Mike Keith for a fascinating Nissan Insider. We've come to the halfway point, and we're ready to make a run towards the playoffs as Titans All Access starts now. He's in trouble. He's sacked! Taken down by Wesley Woodyard. Throws in the end zone. Man is there. Touchdown, Titans! Touchdown, Titans! An extra period, but the Titans get it done again. We're glad to have you with us for another week of Titans All Access. Two wins in a row. Back to back win with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We're glad to have you with us. And some really outstanding individual performances by the Titans in the victory. How about tight end John U. Smith? Six catches, 78 yards, and a big touchdown. Well, don't forget Rashawn Evans. He had 14 tackles. All right, let's stay with Alabama. Okay. Derrick Henry, 16 rushes. 75 yards against the number one run defense in the NFL. That's the best rushing performance all year long against Tampa Bay. Yeah, that'll work. I'll definitely take that. Well, let's take a look at that. How did the Titans do it? Coach Dave McGinnis from Titans Radio standing by to take us beneath the surface and showed us how Derrick Henry was able to make yards on the Bucks. This is Coach Mack, Titans game day radio color analyst. Today, we're going to look at three run plays that show excellent blocking using 13 personnel, 12 personnel, and, did a, and had a, did a nice job against the number one run defense in the National Football League. We've got first and 10, balls on the minus one yard line, 430 in the first quarter. We're in 13 personnel here, which is three tight ends, one wide receiver, one running back. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have deployed an eight man front, which really ends up being a nine man front because the corner is coming up on the nub side tight end very, very tightly. What we're going to see is an inside zone run. Derrick Henry does a tremendous job with his inside zone run. It's up to him to be able to read the gaps along the line of scrimmage and see where there might be an opening. The Buccaneers have all the gaps covered across the front, and what we're going to see is Henry does a tremendous job, eyes on the gaps, Nice skip step. Michael Pruitt does a tremendous job with a cutoff block on Goldston, forklift, little crease. Henry sees the crease, gets through it immediately, and then he's off to the races. Makes the safety miss in the open field with his patented stiff arm. Now he's off to the races. Now we're looking at first and 10, balls on the minus eight yard line. Tampa Bay has gone into their eight man front again against this 13th personnel look. Now what we see is we're gonna see an inside zone run, but now Tampa Bay has gapped up everything inside. Derrick Henry does a great job with his eyes, sees the gaps, one little stutter step, takes to the outside, gets a really nice open field block by Anthony Ferkser here, frees him up, and now he's off to the races again. Right now you see a second illustration of a really good combination block here between the rookie Nate Davis and between Jack Conklin on the three technique. The three tight ends are, are deployed to this side in the 13 personnel. And you can see John U. Smith makes a tremendous hook block on the force, allowing Anthony Ferkser to go out and pick up the cornerback to give Derrick Henry a chance to get around him with his speed. Now we're going to look at first and 10. The ball is on the 42-yard line. What Arthur Smith has done now, he's now gone to 12 personnel. He's got two tight ends, two wide receivers. He has a bunch formation which has caused Tampa Bay now to go from an eight-man front to a seven-man front. Instead of attacking with an inside zone run, he's going to attack with what we call a toss UT. The U is the second tight end that's pulling. The T is the onside tackle pulling. The ball now comes off the line of scrimmage. This is allowing Henry now to use his outstanding perimeter speed. Look at the seal blocks all across the, the perimeter for this perimeter toss to work. 
you must have a seal on the outside. Watch how Jack Conklin, John U. Smith, and Corey Davis do an excellent job of sealing the edge, giving Derrick Henry a tremendous chance with this toss to get to the perimeter. With the deployment of different personnel groups, you can see now how the Titans have attacked both the inside and the outside elements of the number one run defense in the National Football League for substantial yardage gains. Coach Mack can really break it down. Coach Mack could talk about anything and I'd be excited. Well, he talks about anything on Titans Radio every week. Remember, you can hear him calling the games with us every week on your local Titans Radio station. Coming up next on this edition of Titans All Access, we sit down with the Pro Bowler himself, Delaney Walker. Oh, that ought to be good. The Nissan Insider is next. We welcome you back to Titans All Access. It's time now for our Nissan Insider. Delaney Walker sits down with us. In your time with the team, you've been here for seven years. Has there ever been a more interesting Titan player? I don't think so. He has a lot of different interests, Delaney Walker does. And the other part of Delaney Walker is he's not really scared of anything. Oh, no, no, no. I, it, I think he welcomes the scary. Yeah, and the challenges. <laughs> Delaney Walker sits down with us for the Nissan Insider to talk about, well, Delaney Walker. How many times have I interviewed Delaney Walker since 2013? How many times would you guess? How many times have we just spoken in a setting where it's been taped for radio, television, or podcast? I will say about five or six. No, oh, more than that, five or six a year. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I, I get what I was getting at though is so I, I try to give you something different every time. So I'm studying, I'm looking. The only thing I found this time that was this consistent pattern, watching old interviews, listening to old interviews, and reading interviews, you are blunt. Yeah. Obviously, I don't like uh, sitting on the sidelines watching the game. In today's football, it's a lot different. A lot of these guys can't take that. A lot of these guys don't like to be called out. They want to fight or they want to be traded. We came here for two reasons. Chew some bubble gum and kick some ass. And we all out of bubble gum. You are a blunt guy. Have you always been like that? I've always been taught to say what's on my mind, you know. Who taught you that? My mom, you know, I, I think just watching her, she never hold back. She always said what was on her mind. And I think you are what you see, you know, and I've seen my mom doing that my entire life and she still do it, even to me. So it just carried over. I don't, I don't want to be fake. So I just try to say what's real. And if they don't like it, then I guess you won't be my friend at the end of the day. That comes from a total lack of fear. People who are like that, who don't have the BS meter, who just are blunt, aren't scared. That certainly fits you, right? Yeah, I would say uh, I'm not scared of most things. I mean, what are you scared of? I mean, I think everyone is scared of dying. Um, so that, that, that's one of my biggest fears. Maybe just not being able to accomplish my goals may scare me. I don't know if that's People look at that and just feel like I'm cocky or whatnot, but I think them are the type of things that should scare anyone. But that's good fear because that's motivating, Very right? Very true, yeah. Have you ever been afraid on the football field? No, never on the football field. I, I, I feel like on the football field, I, at the end of the day, I done worked so hard. I didn't put so much into this. Like, why well, let another man scare me when at the same time we're doing the exact same thing? So I shouldn't be afraid it's a game at the end of the day and we all play it the same way so I don't think I'm scared when I'm on the field. Did you ever see it going this long when you started out? What was the goal when you started out? Maybe like eight years. I think I used to tell my mom I'm gonna play for like eight years and she was like that's a long time you know and now we talk about 14 years she's like you know you, that's a very long time that you've been playing it. I never thought that I'll be in the league 14 years and be at this level that I'm at right now, but I'm happy. You know, I'm happy about all of the things I've done, the goals I've set. Hopefully I can play some more years. Coming up on Titans All Access, General Manager John Robinson joins Mike and Amy to talk about the team's two-game win streak and what's next at Carolina. Stay tuned. 
Welcome back to Titans All Access. Pleased to be joined by General Manager John Robinson. Two wins in a row. Good thing. Let's talk about some of the big players from the win over Tampa Bay. How does Jarrell Casey just keep doing it? Yeah, you know, he, he works extremely hard. Um, he, he's a talented player. Uh, he's played a lot of football. There's not much that he hasn't seen. You know, we talk about guys that kind of have an instinct or a nose for the football, and, and he's certainly one of those guys that, that just, you know, in, in big time uh, situations, he comes up with a play for us. Speaking of defensive tackles, how did Jeffrey Simmons do in his second game? Yeah, got a few more snaps um, this past week against Tampa. He factored on a twist game that, that Casey had a sack on, drew a big holding call for us, working the technique. I think that's the thing that he's really improving on is the technique. All right, let's talk about the secondary at this point and how these guys all year long as a group have made big plays. What is so special about the group of five, six, even seven guys who make it happen in your secondary? Well, I think those guys that have been around each other for, for a while now, they know how to play off each other's strengths or, or make up for, you know, for a coverage where we're really putting maybe one guy in a bind, the other guy knows I've got to kind of do a little extra here. They communicate really well verbally and non-verbally with signaling and really do a great job of trying to get the defense on the same page. Carolina, the opponent this week, when you start with the Panthers, you've got to start with their back, Christian McCaffrey, so versatile, run game, pass game. Why is he so effective in both? Well, he's, he's, a really, he's a really instinctive player. He's got great vision as a runner. He's quick, he's fast. He's bigger in stature than, you know, than maybe he gets credit for. He runs with good strength, and he's great out of the backfield. His hands are exceptional. Uh, when he gets in the open field, he's really, really dangerous. On defense, the Panthers have a combined 30 quarterback sacks. How are they able to get that pressure from all over the place? Yeah, I think that's, you know, that's an interesting stat. And 12, there's been 12 players that have, have contributed to, the, to those 30 sacks. I think it starts up front. You know, they've got really good playmakers starting on the interior of the D-line with Poe and, and the Pro Bowl and McCoy. They're, at, they're into the line of scrimmage, they're rushers, uh, whether it's the rookie Burns, who's off to a fast start, Mario Addison, who's really developed into a good player, uh, and, the, and the Pro Bowl of Bruce Irvin. You know, all of those guys up front along that line of scrimmage, they factor. And then, you, you know, you, you kick in Luke Keekley, who's not a bad player, he's yeah. Jack Thompson. You know, those guys, are they can be really tough to handle. How did the Tennessee Titans go to Charlotte and beat the Carolina Panthers? Well, I think offensively for us, we, we've got to stay on track. We've got, to, we've got to sustain drives. We've got to make third downs. We've got to get to the red zone and, and, and score points. And, and defensively, it's about limiting their, their playmakers. We've got, to, we've got to affect this young quarterback. Uh, we've got to get pressure on him. And we've got to contain McCaffrey, who we talked about. And then Olsen uh, at tight end, who's a uh, you know, perennial Pro Bowl player. And their weapons offensively. This Samuel's really fast. Uh, DJ Moore is an excellent football player. So you know, be a big test for us this Sunday. Now, John, we want to take a minute to congratulate you on a special award that you received this past weekend. Oh, thanks. Good yeah. stuff. John returned to his alma mater, Southeast Missouri State, better known as SEMO, and received the Alumni Merit Award presented by Southeast's Alumni Association at the Copper Dome Society Merit Recognition Dinner during SEMO's homecoming celebration. What a special thing for you and your family. Yeah, it, I mean, it was cool to go back and, and see some familiar faces and, and see the campus, you know, kind of kind of where it all started. And I'm extremely blessed for, for CMO taking a chance on me and, and for the honor of, of getting that award. Congratulations. Thank you. Good stuff. More good stuff coming up on Titans All Access, including the Titans Chattanooga connection at defensive tackle. Those guys reunited last weekend. Stay tuned for more Titans All Access. Mike, this past weekend was homecoming weekend, which is one of my favorites. It's so fun to see all the Titans alumni back. Chris Johnson was here. The whole 99 team was here, a good portion of them. It was really, really fun to see. Love all the connections, and I really loved one connection. A connection actually from Chattanooga, a great home for Titans fans and a great home for defensive tackles for this organization. As a matter of fact, the old 97, was back to see the new 97, who's actually his protege. Homecoming weekends are most special because of the people that we have to see. At a Tennessee Titans get together, Tony Brown is one of those people. The miraculous story of how Brown became a Titan gives you an idea that there's a special force around him. It was simply meant to be. With the Titans desperate for a defensive tackle in October 2006, Tony Brown got a text while in church. He normally didn't have his phone with him in church, but on this Sunday night he did, and he was able to respond quickly. And it clicked 
in a way that was simply meant to be. The NFL journeyman became a fixture at defensive tackle, a four-year starter with over 300 tackles and 18 sacks. A man who was part of the NFL's best defensive line in 2008 and became a favorite of the legend who coached the Tennessee defensive line, Jim Washburn. Tony Brown's five-year run with the Titans came to an end after the 2010 season, but he left Nashville admired for his hard work and toughness and loved for his appreciation for the opportunity. His former Titans coach Jeff Fisher summoned Brown to St. Louis, where he became a quality control coach for the Rams. That led to an opportunity in his hometown with Russ Huseman and the Chattanooga Mocs. Tony Brown became a defensive line coach. At that moment, Brown became the coach of a 245 pound talent from a Chattanooga suburb, Isaiah Mack. Again, it was simply meant to be. The bond grew bigger between the two Chattanooga natives. Over four seasons, Tony Brown taught Isaiah Mack all that he knew about playing defensive tackle, and Mack listened, eventually becoming an All-American and the SOCON Defensive Player of the Year. What to do next? Try professional football. Tony Brown helped Mack train for his opportunity with Brown's old team, the Tennessee Titans. And again, the pupil was able to take advantage of the master's knowledge. Isaiah Mack didn't just make the Titans opening day as an undrafted free agent. He's played in every game this season, wearing his old number 97, and playing his old position, Mack has made Tony Brown so proud, keeping the Titans' Chattanooga defensive connection alive and well. From sitting in the room to out here. Yeah. What's up? When you came and spoke to my guys down at UTC? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I told you he was going to be all right. What's up, man? I had heard a lot of Tony and my defensive line coaches were really close with Tony, so he asked him to come be the D-line coach. So after that, he would just stay on me, stay on me, watch film. He would take me one-on-one -on -one in practice, and then it just built into a good relationship, and now I'm just happy I got him in my life. So so tell me this. When did you meet <clears throat> Isaiah Mack? He was a freshman. I got him as a freshman at UTC. Yeah, he was probably about 245. He, I'm going to be honest with you, he was just more talented than a lot of guys we had. You know what I'm saying? He really was. He definitely could have been a guy that could have went somewhere else. But it was where he came from high school. You know what I'm saying? He really was kind of right in between the Tennessee and the not so good part of Georgia. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, he would stay on me because he, he seen so much of me and him. So he would coach me like how he was coaching. He would get on to me like how he was going just to keep me on track and just keep me, keep me uh, focused on what I needed to do. So what's it like for you to see him wearing your number, <laughs> playing your position with the Tennessee Titans? It's special, man. It's, it's funny because I had, uh, I had, as a matter of fact, Albert and Javon, all those guys came and talked to my, talked to those guys maybe four years ago, man. And uh, he was in that room and for him, he was, you know, he, and he asked a lot of good questions. A lot of the dudes asked a lot of good questions. It's like it lit a fire in him. You know, and then, and they always used to joke about it. You know, me, I'm like, I was pretty good. Oh, of course, you weren't good, but just to see those guys take the time to even come to Chattanooga to talk to them, you know, it meant a lot. So for me to see him out there, man, he was excited. He called me, like, man, I'm gonna wear your number, bro. And I was like, that's cool. It means a lot to me, man, you know, and just keep it going. So aren't you glad you answered that text in church in 2006? Of course I am. <laughs> and it's crazy, man, I never would have, and it's, I had, I had my uh, my wife person rush and get out of the car, and I just tossed the phone in there. And if it wouldn't have been for me rushing and getting there late, man, I, don't, I ain't no telling, because I probably wouldn't have, I would have got there later, you know, but it was right on time. It might have called somebody else. I'm telling you, that's what I'm saying. It would have been a late call, like, oh, yeah, we moved on already. Uh, I'm like, ah, all right. But yeah, it, it, it was meant for that to happen, man. No doubt about it. And so look at this. 13 years later, you're here with your guys. No doubt about it, man. And your guys out there on the field wearing yeah. your number from Chattanooga. Right. Life works in funny ways, doesn't it? It does. It does. I'm all about it. I love it, man. Uh, that's why That's why I just try to do everything right, man. You know how I am. You always have. I appreciate it, That's man. why we love you. <laughs> I appreciate that. When this edition of Titans All Access returns, Mike Keith and Amy Wells share good news and good nights. Stick around. The good news this week, the continued growth of the official Titans podcast, better known as the OTP, 
Amy Wells, tell people what the official Titans podcast, the OTP, is all about. The OTP is your primary source for Titans news. We talk about all kinds of Titans things that are happening. You're there, I'm there, Jim Wyatt's there, Coach Mack is there. Tons of perspectives, all the analysis you need, and it's very easy to get. So if you're a Titans fan, you should subscribe. Amy Wells, how do you subscribe? Wherever you get your podcasts, you just hit that subscribe button. Be sure to like it, send it to your friends, leave us some reviews, we'd love to hear from you. The OTP, the official Titans podcast, continuing to grow. Thanks to everyone who follows it already, and we welcome new subscribers aboard now. Absolutely. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. On the next Titans All Access. Wide receiver Adam Humphreys watches Adam Humphreys in action from his days at Clemson and shares his friendship with the courageous Daniel Rodriguez on Salute to Service Weekend. And speaking of the military, the men and women of the 101st take over St. Thomas Sports Park for a football tournament of their own. John Robinson previews a visit from the Kansas City Chiefs. But it's Jamie Robinson who steals the show by sharing a look inside the general manager's amazing family. And Titans Radio's Dave McGinnis takes us on another trip to the Titans film room. All that and more on the next Titans All Access.